Physics students, good afternoon. There's too few of you here. In our video today, we're going to be looking at forces acting on an object and how to represent forces using a free body diagram, as well as applying Newton's second law to look at what happens to an object that is subject to more than one type of force. Specifically, the problem that we're going to look at is going to be located on homework number four. This one is titled The Force on a Soccer Ball. It is a two-part problem, and we're going to be looking at both parts of the problem. So, I'll read the problem statement for us, and then we will jump in. It says this, Sue and Jenny kick a soccer ball at exactly the same time. Sue's foot exerts a force of 51.1 newtons to the north. Jenny's foot exerts a force of 108.8 newtons to the east. So before we get into what the question is asking us to solve for, I'm just going to represent the forces acting on our object with a free body value. Okay? So we're told here that we have a few forces acting on our ball. So we've got, it looks like Sue's foot exerting a force of 51.1 newtons to the north. So we'll have an arrow going up to the north, 51.1 newtons. And then we're also told that Jenny's foot exerts a force of 108.8 newtons to the east. 108.8 newtons to the east. Okay? The question is asking us this. What is the magnitude of the resultant force on the ball? Okay. So when we hear magnitude or resultant, we want to think we're looking at the overall force. What is happening given all the forces that we are accounting for on our object. Now here, and we'll talk about this a little bit in class, we're not really told that we want to factor in our force of gravity. We're just looking at the forces that are being applied onto the ball by both Sue and Jenny. So one way that we can actually help our picture make a little bit more sense is this. I'm going to take this 51.1 newtons. I'm just going to slide it over here, which is going to help us see that the ball is being kicked east and north. So the result should be our object moving northeast. So I'm going to draw in here an overall force, we can call our net force. Net just means overall. Okay? So our net force is something we would want to solve for. That is what the question asks us. What is the magnitude of the resultant or net force on the ball? So what we can do here is because we have a force directly in the east direction and a force directly in the north direction, is we can model this as a right triangle and we can apply a trig function or Pythagorean theorem, depending on what we're trying to find. So we'll model this as a right triangle. Uh, the way that we set up Pythagorean theorem to find our hypotenuse here would look like this. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. C is going to be our hypotenuse. The sides A and B are just the base and height of our triangle. It does not matter which side we call A, which side we call B for what we are doing here. So A, we can just say, is one of our sides that we know will go 108.8 newtons. That is squared, A squared. B, our other side, 51.1 newtons, quantity squared, is equal to C squared. So we'll plug these values in. 108.8 squared plus 51.1 squared. That will give us a pretty large value. It looks like 14,448. Yep. Just to double check, 14448.7 newtons is equal to c squared. And then we will take the square root to determine the value that we're looking for. It should actually be newtons squared because we squared our unit as well. And then we take a square root and we get a value of approximately 120.2. So our hypotenuse, c, which is our net force, would be approximately 120.2 newtons. So again here, we're just looking for what is the overall or net force given the two forces acting on the ball, the kick from Sue and the kick from Jenny. Now again, we did not necessarily factor in a force of gravity on this object. We're just looking at the forces that are being applied by the kickers, Sue and Jenny. We're not necessarily looking at Things like air resistance and or the force of gravity, we're just looking at what is the result of these two forces acting on the ball. 
Now this is a part one of, as I mentioned, a two-part question. Part two asks us this. What is the direction of the resultant force measured from east? So here's what we now know. Okay? We know that we have a force of 108.8 newtons east, 51.1 newtons north, and we've now found our net or overall resultant force to be 120.2 newtons. It's now asking us for the direction. It says measured from east. That means we're going to find the a angle measured from the east direction. So we're going to find this angle right in here. That will be our theta. Since we have all three sides of our right triangle, we can use any trig function that we would like to. And the default that I would use is tangent here because we are given the base, the force east, and the height, the force north. We may or may not have made a mistake in rounding up here. I think we have a pretty good value, but just in case, we can use what the problem gives us to minimize the possibility of making an error. So I would set up a trig function that looks like this. Tangent of our angle theta. Okay? The reason I'll use tangent is because I know the adjacent, uh, excuse me, the opposite and the adjacent sides. So tangent, if you'll remember, soca toa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to take 51.1 divided by 108.8. Now, we want in this equation to get the tangent okay, off of the theta, so we can get theta by itself. So I'm going to multiply by an inverse tangent. I'm not going to divide. Okay, the way that we undo a trig function is by a okay, multiply by the inverse. So we have tangent multiplied by inverse tangent. Our expression will now resemble that theta, our angle, is equal to inverse tangent of 51.1 over 108.8. So now we'll plug this value into our calculator, making sure we're in degree mode. If you're in radian mode, you are likely going to get a small decimal or maybe a negative value. Okay, so second tangent, 51.1 divided by 108.8. I get a value of 25.2, which is exactly what we're looking for. So theta here, would be approximately 25.2 degrees. So when it says direction, that tells us we're looking for an angle. And when it says measured from east, that just means based off, based off of our direction to the east. So this would be 25.2 degrees. So here we're taking these ideas of vectors, angles, trig functions, and applying them to what we know about forces. We can treat forces as vectors, just as we did things like displacement and velocity previously. So here, even though this problem doesn't necessarily involve Newton's laws of motion, we're still showing that we can apply these math concepts into our understanding of forces and even forces at an angle. So hopefully this gives you some direction on these two parts of your homework, and good luck.